Good morning, everybody. My name is Tina Kovergich, and I am Northern Stamper. I am a Canadian Independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm here to show you um, this uh, this week what we're going to be looking at are my thoughts on the 10 top tools that you must have in your crafting stash. Now, I don't know if any of you um, are beginner uh, stampers or you've been stamping forever. Let me know below um, how long have you been stamping, whether you're new or just starting out. And I just wanted to say hello. So I'm going to talk about the 10 top tools that I think are the best to have. Good morning, Zara. I'm glad you could join me. And so normally what I do is every week I take one of my beloved stamps and what I do is I showcase them throughout the week and I make um, uh, cards with them throughout the week and show you different things that you can do with them. But I thought, you know, it's coming up to Christmas and maybe you need some items for your uh, Christmas list, your wish list. And I um, thought, let's go over some of the items that I think you could always ask Santa for. Now, if you do not have um, a catalog, a lot of the items I'm going to be discussing today are from the annual catalog. Uh, this is the annual catalog. It runs from June to to. June to June, so it's 12 months, and the items we're going to be discussing are from here. So they're the tools from here, not from the August to December mini catalog or the new one coming out. Um, I will be doing another um, um, special on those um, as they come out, maybe next week or the week after as it comes closer. This time around, we are going to be focusing on the annual catalog. If you don't have one, drop a message below. I'd be thrilled to mail you out one. Um, so just in case, uh, like I said, let me know where you're from. Um, I, I love to know where everybody's from, so just pop it down in the, uh, in the comments below. And what I'm going to do is actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to put you up on the ma camera mount. So if you get kind of queasy with moving around, just kind of just take a look away for a second and um, then it'll be up. So once again, this is, it's from the annual catalog. And I will be referring to it. I will also show you the items in here. So, with a no further ado, I am going to actually first show you one of the best things. Um, because it's it's a large item, I'm going to show you it now, um, and then I'm going to place it on uh, place you on the mount. Okay. So, one of the best things that I that Stampin' Up has come out with is a cut and stamp emboss machine. Now they have a large size, which is actually called their regular size, and they have just released a smaller one. So it's like six by six, so it's much smaller. And it's called a cut emboss machine. And what you can do, oh dear, I do this every single time. I should remember that I'm attached to the phone. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> are you okay? I did this last time. Oh my goodness. So the cut and stamp emboss machine it is, this is the regular size one, so it's got a little handle, so you um, roll it through. But right now it is all kind of folded up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up. You open it up like this and pop the levers down. And in there you would place some plates. And I will show you how this works. And then with the crank machine, you're going to crank it through and it will either emboss or cut. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I just wanted to give you an overall view of it because once it's on the mount, it's kind of very large and hard to see. So give me a second. I'm going to place you on the mount and let's see how this goes. I'll try not to drop you this time. So let's get you going. Oh, hold on. There we go. Okay. There we go. So now you're all set up. As I mentioned, my name is Northern Stamper. If you need to reach me for anything, just type in northernstamper at gmail.com. It is all one word, so you could just drop that in. As I said, my name is Tina Kovergic. And if you wish to join in some classes, events, or check out my online store, it's northernstamper at stampinup.net. So as I was mentioning, uh, this is the stamp and boss machine and what I'm going to do is show you this is kind of very difficult because it is um, such a large item what the stamp and boss machine comes with is some plates and what you need those two um, is actually kind of to shim up 
and, and set it up. So there are instructions on plates on how to do it. So if you're cutting or embossing, it tells you. Now, this one plate is very well used. I use it a lot. So don't worry if your plate eventually looks like this. It still can be used. This is a brand new plate. So I'm going to show you as it goes through. So it starts out like this, nice and clear, and then comes through um, eventually with little cut machines. So if I was going to emboss, I would follow along on the instructions on the plates here, and I would layer up the shims and run this through. So I'm going to show you how to emboss. This is an embossing folder, which means it's going to press the paper. So if I ran this through, and it would come out as I open it up, and the paper would be all pressed. So that is called dry embossing. It is fantastic. It adds a lot of dimension to your cards or your backgrounds. These are fantastic. So this is a new embossing folder that's coming out in January. I just wanted to show you. Now, if I was going to do some cutting, um, I will show you in a bit because I need to stamp first and that's some of it. And I would run it through here, place it on these plates and run it through. I'm going to show you that in a bit as I cut some of the items out because what I'm going to be talking about next are some of the other items that are great to have. So if you are looking for the Stamp and Boss machine, it is on page 171 of the annual catalog. I'm just going to flip into here. And as you see, there are two sizes. This is the one that up here is the regular size and there is a smaller one. So, and it does come with some plates and it's a great tool to have and it works really, really well. So there are, like I said, there are two sizes. There's the regular size at 163 or the smaller one at $82. Now, if you wanted to, you can always join my team and add this to your starter kit. Now your starter kit is $135. But if this machine is 163, you get it actually for 135. What a great item to add to a starter kit for a great deal for Christmas. So that is one item. The stamp and boss machine is a great tool to have. Now, as I go through, I will be referring back to it, so don't worry about that. I'm going to show you some of the other tools that are great to have that are um, a very are the necessities. So there's an item and it's called a snip. It's these are like very small scissors. And I got to warn you, these are super, super sharp. Okay, so you don't want to cut yourself. They are about they are only less than six inches long. They're very sharp. They're great for cutting everything out. And they are only 1350. So the snips are a must have. Uh, for cutting things out. There is also a bone folder that you get. Now that is to crease or help flatten some of the items as you go along. I've used this a lot and this is $9.50. So that's the embossing folder and the snips and there is an item called a pick a tool and what happens is I have this one set right now for a very sharp tool because we are going to be using this in a little bit. Um, you see there is a lock and unlock so you can take it off and flip it around if you want to use the spatula side. There are a, a variety of items that do come with this and I will show you in upcoming posts this week so I'm not going to take too much time on it right now but you will see I will be using this today and it's $14 so that's the pick a tool. And some of the other items that are a, a great must have are these acrylic blocks. They do come in a variety of sizes. So and it matches uh, some of the stamps that you have. So what you want to do is when you have a stamp, you want the stamp to fit on the block just barely. You don't want a huge, huge block because then it gets more difficult to deal with. You want the block about the same size as your stamp that you're placing on. And they, like I said, they do come in different sizes. Um, on the size, there are marked, I don't know if you can tell, but there are letters. So this is a letter C and this is a letter B. So that's a little smaller. There's an A. So these are all marked with different letters denoting different sizes. 
And when you look in the catalog, a stamp set will say um, it fits on block A, B, C, D, and so on. And those are the blocks that you would like to have in your, in your stash. Now, these blocks are great. They are thick. And there is a ridge all the way around that you can hold on to. So these are great for holding on to. I had purchased some before that are only half the size without the ridge. And they are very, I found that they were difficult to manipulate and to stamp with. They're okay if you're starting out, but I would definitely invest in the larger block. So these are fantastic and you can reposition your stamps on them. So and that's what you want to do. These are fantastic little things to, to have in your stash. So snips, bone folder, pick a tool, you got some blocks. Um, one of the other items that I think is very important to have is called a stamp and scrub or a chamois. Now, the chamois I will show later in the week and uh, post that. But the stamp and scrub is um, a two-sided cleaning tool. Now, what you do sometimes, uh, you have uh, ink in some of the very deep crevices or something like that. So one side is wet. You would spray it with an, with some of this stamp and scrub spray so you just spritz it and then you clean your stamp on one side and then dry it on the other and that gets into all the nooks and crannies now this is great um, I have this and I have a chamois which you'll see later in the week the chamois is purple and it's um, like a chamois and you wash it you put it with water and you just clean your stamps because they the inks are water-based and they clean off fairly quickly so they're both great to have. Um, I find I like this to get in between all the nooks and crannies, but I still use my chamois a lot. So that is one of the items that I have. So that is snips, bone folder, pick a tool, blocks. You saw the, the stamp and boss machine, the stamp and scrub and chamois, which you, you'll see later in the week. And one of the most important things to have is a trimmer. Now the trimmer is great. This is a very lightweight. Um, it, the cutting blades and the scoring blades are fantastic. Um, I have been able to cut two to three layers of cardstock on top of each other in one, in one cut. Or if I use the designer series paper, I can stack up up to six and cut. So this has a great ruler. Now I just kind of cheat and there are two marks on here that I've done myself. Is Those are the two standard sizes for cards, but uh, you can do that yourself. So the trimmer also has an extendable ruler, so in case your paper is longer than the six inches that it is normally, you can just extend that. So the trimmer is a fantastic tool. You can't create cards or scrapbooking without a trimmer, so this is a great one to have. Um, you don't need a lot of pressure to cut. You just pull it back and forth and it cuts really well. It's very sharp too. So watch your fingers as uh, you don't run it under under the blade. So and this is $34. So, what I, so there's a couple of more items that I think are a must have. And there is, it's called a Stamparatus. And that I have a special on. Uh, specifically later on this week and it is a repositioning tool to help you stamp so I'm just gonna mention it right now but keep an eye on later this week and I will show you how the Stamparatus works but last but not least my number 10 item to have are punches and I'm going to show you how to create some cards with punches so there are different punches in the catalog and they are fantastic. They are very well made, so they do lock. You just slide it back and forth, and they're very sharp, and they do cut out um, your items really, really well. I like I like a lot of the punches because they are quick and easy to, to just to grab and go on. So this is a label punch, and it is fantastic for making little labels. I do use this a lot for... Uh, scrap papers that I have left over I just punch them out and I toss them and into my bin that I can use later so a label punch there's this little blooms punch there is a punch that 
if you want, you can end have some ends. And what you do is you take your piece of paper, you just slide it in. Oops, let's go, come on, slide it in. And you just punch it out and it makes an end. Now I can never get the ends right with this uh, snip. So this is a fantastic tool. So they have a variety of, of uh, punches that do this type of um, ends. They have three different ones. So you can have, take a look in the catalog and choose which one you like the best. I have used this fishtail kind of one all the time. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on that. But this fishtail one is fantastic. It makes great uh, tag ends. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And we're going to be using this one. And one of the sprig punches. This is fantastic. This is very cool. So this punches out little sprigs. And... Um, you can add these for cards, you can make these into antlers, you know, there's so many things that you could do with punches. And punches are great to have because they are quick and easy, and sometimes you can even think outside the box and make like a little gnome guy. So this little gnome is made completely out of punches. So this is actually a treetop punch. So I've cut out the tree, I've just kind of snipped off the little... Um, stem part of the tree. Um, his feet and his nose are from a flower petal punch and his beard part is from the glean, gleaning, gleaming ornaments uh, punch. So it's all placed together and it's all put together with just layers and you can create different items um, with punches. They're really great to have. So what I'm going to do is I want to show you some of the items that you can use that I've just talked about. So I wanted to show you, I did promise you I was going to show you about the embossing and um, uh, cutting machine. So what I wanted to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to stamp these two images and then I'm going to cut them out. So I wanted to show you how that works. Okay. So stick with me. I'm just using some ink pad. This is Roco Rose. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ink it up. Now I don't want it full strength because otherwise you're going to um, kind of miss some of it. I'm going to take some of this ink off and place it on my piece of paper. And I'm going to take the leftover ink that's on here and put it on a piece of Whisper White. So it's very, very um, subtle. So as I said, you can take this. This is on an ink block. Okay, so there's a little bit of ink on here right now. And what I'm going to be using is my Stampin' Scrub to clean my block. So or I sprayed it on one side. And I'm just going to rub it on the wet side and then rub it on the dry side to dry it out. So and now that I know it's nice and clean, it is good to go back in its case. So, as I mentioned, the blocks, see, I can hold them on the side. I'm going to ink it up, and I'm just going to stamp on here. And that gives me another layer. It's much darker because it's the first generation of ink. As I mentioned, I'm going to clean it. My stamp and scrub, got to have my stamp and scrub. These are things I use all the time. And dry it off. So now, like I said, it's good to go back into its case. I'm going to close this up just in case I stick my finger in that. I don't want to do that. And let's bring back in the embossing and cut machine. So I'm going to bring this in. Hopefully not knock everything out. Let's make some room. I think I need a bigger table. And as I mentioned, I have the very variety of plates here. And I'm just going to follow the instructions. So it says to put plate number three and then... I have this one down, my paper, and from the stamp set, I have a die that coordinates with that flower. So I'm just going to place it on and move it around. So now I have the die on there and it's not ready to go through. You got to think of it kind of like a grilled cheese sandwich. So these uh, clear plates are like your bread and the uh, the dye and the paper are your special cheeses. So I'm going to push it through and I'm cranking that handle that I've used to cut it out. 
is very easy to do. It doesn't take much, much effort. And as I cut it out, there's a, the piece that's the die. This is the leftover piece of paper. And it has now cut out the flower that I wanted. So I wanted to show you how that looks. So let's put that aside. And we can use that for something. And so that's for how you use the cut and emboss machine and the blocks. I wanted to show you a little bit about that. But in the meantime, let's go and create a card using our punches. Okay, so what I have done, we're going to use that sprig punch. And we're going to start making a wreath. So I've started this a little while ago. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, punch out some sprigs from the different cardstock. Now, I've already started some because this wreath does take quite a bit. So I've started some and I want to just show you. So I have them in the little takeout containers. Everybody's got these little takeout containers, I think, nowadays that everybody's taking out. So I just keep them and I use them to transport my little things in them. So what you're going to do is on the top of the punch, you're going to slide in your cardstock and you can see it as it goes in and you're just going to simply punch and just punch a whole bunch out. So this is just using the sprig. It does punch right out towards you and sometimes if you're not prepared, it will come right in your face, but that's okay or in your lap. So the punches are really super easy to use. They're very sharp. And let's finish up making this card. So this card started out with a card mat. So I have a five and one quarter, five and one quarter by four. And this will go on a card base. And I also have um, a circle that I have. This is about a three inch circle. So I'm just using this circle as um, um, a template so I can kind of know where my wreath will be going. So I'm going to glue this down. Oop, I'm going to glue this down. And that is just basically going to show me the pattern that I'm going to follow for the wreath. Okay. Now remember I told you I have my little pick a tool. I'm going to use this. Okay. The little sharp part. And to make this wreath, I need my mini glue dots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of the sprigs that I've used from the punch. I'm going to look for the mini glue dots and pull one off. Oh, the whole paper came too. My goodness. And just place it on here. And I'm just going to start building. So I'm just going to follow this pattern around. So I'm going to just follow it around. So I'm going to put a couple on just to give you the idea of how to start. So these punches are great. You know, they're very quick. And they are so, so easy to use. And they run about $24, sometimes up to $30. 32 depending on which one you get so I'm just going to keep going with one particular color now I'm using the granny apple green to start on my base and what I'm going to do is I have uh, two or three other colors that I'm going to be adding in so I'm just going to keep going so I would just keep going all the way around on that all right So just to start, and I'm not putting them too close together because as I start adding in the other colors, I am going to be slipping them in and I'm going to be building it up. So as I go around, I slip them in and it builds up. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing a couple of more of these in this granny apple green. So let me know if you are a new stamper. Or you've been stamping for years. I see Zara has eyes online and she has been a, a stamper for about eight years. That is fantastic. That is a long time for stamping. And it is, it. you know what I find? It never gets old. 
Okay, so I kind of started with a base all around. So that is the one color. Um, I still have a lot left over. Now, I'm not going to throw these out. I'm going to keep them for later if I need it for something else. I'm going to now move into a different color. And I've already pre-punched a lot of, of the little sprigs out. So I'm just going to keep working with that. And again, they are in my little takeout container. So that I have them separated by color. Uh, those little takeout containers are actually very helpful. I use it when I am... Um, actually doing a lot of work at the cut and boss machine I have a stack full so if I'm cutting out a whole bunch of of items um, at my stamp and boss machine I toss them in there so I don't lose them as I carry it from one table to another to my workspace so I'm going to keep going around and I'm just going to slip them in between the granny apple green now this color is garden green so it's a little different shade you can tell it's a little darker this is a really good color for christmas so now you everybody has something on their christmas list so if you are new to stamping and you are looking for some of the tools consider some of the tools i've had mentioned of the top 10 you will not be disappointed there is something you will use all the time every time you you create so as you can tell so this is going fairly quickly okay so i'm going to keep going around and i keep adding in between the little sprigs i just love this this does take a little bit of time but the result is fantastic i love 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 working with these oh <laughs> I missed that one. Yeah, there we go. And if you do comment below, I always like to send out happy mail, which is something that is not junk mail. That is not a bill. It is just a card. Um, I love sending out happy mail. So mark below and I will send you out some happy mail if you would like. And... If you're lucky enough, you'll get this card that I'm creating here. So this is very, very fun to do. So it may look difficult, but really it is not. So I have now done one and one row of the garden green, one row of granny apple green. And now I'm going to move into my third color, which is old olive. And it's actually kind of a mix of old olive and pear pizzazz. Those two colors are fairly close. And I thought I'd just mix them in together as I punch. And I did not use a lot of cardstock on this. I used my, my odds and ends to um, create all these little sprigs. So as you see, now it's starting to get a lot more full. Okay, and all I'm doing is slipping it in between. So, a couple of more around. Now, some of the other punches that you can use with this is a little flower punch. And I'm going to be punching some of those out. And I'm going to be using it in red. I'm going to show you that. And we are also going to be making a banner with that kind of fish tail kind of end and that's another punch like punches I'm telling you for what they are they are so simple they are great to have especially the the label ones they have a variety of label punches and they are fantastic oh good morning Michelle thank you for joining us so they are really very easy and they're great to have I use up um, usually at the end of the year, I use up all of my little bits of pieces. I collect them throughout the, the year, like white and um, very vanilla. And I just sit there and I just punch out a whole bunch of labels using the punches. And actually, it goes very quickly. And it uses up all of the extra pieces that I have. So I'm just going to keep going in. Now, looks like I can add some more over here. So... We're almost done. Hang in with me. You're going to love how this turns out. So let's put this in here. 
like I said, the variety of colors that they have really accent each other. And you can't go wrong with mixing some of these colors together. Stampin' Up! has made it so that I, I've tried to mix some colors that really I don't think go together. And they really do. They've, they, you can't go wrong. They always seem to match. So I filled up now my wreath there. Okay. So it is actually quite full. If you want, if you're re replicating this, you can keep going and just add more. See, I still got lots left. Never throw them out because you never know what you're going to use them for. So I'm going to show you how some of the uh, punches work. There was a little flower one I have here. This is super, super cute. And in the middle, all you do is just add a little um, embellishment. So you just keep punching some of these out. It doesn't take much strength to punch a lot of these out. This flower one is super cute, i got to tell you. It also matches a stamp set that they have. So I've already cut some out in my little takeout container. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place some of them around. Now, where did I place my glue? Okay, so I'm going to get my glue dots again. Place my glue dot down. Now, when you're creating, you remember from art class, do you remember from art class what they said? The uh, optimal number sequence is three, five, seven. So you're just going to toss in some of those around. Try and keep it at an odd number, like one, three, five. And you can't... Oh, it's stuck to me. That's kind of funny. So I'm just going to keep going around. So I got three on that side. And maybe I'll put three on the opposite side. Or, okay, got one over there. So I'm just going to keep adding them. Okay. So I'm just going to put uh, a couple like that. And, whoa! Oh dear. Did you fall down again? I think I have to invest in a better, <laughs> better camera stand. Oh. Uh, so, bear with me. It does happen. Sorry about that. And I am going to grab some... I was going to say embellishments. Okay, I have a couple of embellishments here. What I'm going to do is just peel them off with my pick tool And I'm going to put them on. Now, this tool is fantastic. Got to have it. For the price it is, I'm going to just flip it around and show you with the spatula side. So put that in the lock. And I'm going to take that off. Can just slip it underneath. That works just as well. Okay. Little tools that fit in your stocking. You can tell your husband, I need those things to help create fantastic cards. So I have now my wreath. I have my flower. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to stamp a little sentiment on this little piece of paper. And I'm going to show you with that fishtail kind of end uh, punch. And we will add that on. So let's just use us. Uh, okay, I'm going to get some black ink. Memento black is a great color to have. And let's just say I'm going to put it over here. Now, sometimes you get crooked, but don't worry, there are always two sides to a piece of paper. If it doesn't turn out right on the first side, flip it over and try again. Okay? There is no right, there is no wrong, and there is no mistakes. So, that's okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little fishtail. So, if I'm going to put it here, I could always tuck it in here. And maybe I'll make the fishtail on that side. Okay. So I'm just going to snip off a little bit. And I'm going to fit it in. Now I'm going to put it so that the stamp side is down. So as I push it through, I can see if I start seeing the lettering on the one side, I know it's too close. So if I have that like there, I'm just going to snip a little bit off on this side. And let's get some dimensionals. 
Now the dimensionals help pop up the the sentiment or anything that you put it under. Okay, just gives it some depth. Okay, so I'm just going to tuck it in and put it like that. Now, as I had mentioned, I have a card base and I've already scored it. So with the trimmer, so I cut it with the trimmer and then I scored it. So there is a score blade on the trimmer and that's a great thing to have because some of them don't come with a score blade and you really actually need that. And I'm going to glue it on to my card base. Now, remember I told you about the, the bone folder, how you would use it to flatten things on uh, maybe a card base or something like that? I think I'm running out of glue. I love this glue. It is like fantastic glue. I think that one is done. It, is, it holds super, super well. So I'm just going to put a little bit in here. It's really good glue. So the bone folder, let me show you again. So I have the bone folder. See how this keeps popping up on me? Now I want it to lay a little bit more flat. So I'm going to just run my bone folder over this. And because it's smooth, it doesn't leave any marks. And let's put this on there. There we go. Now, that is a card completely done made just with punches. So that is something fantastic you need to have. Punches are a great addition to your stamping stash. Don't forget a bone folder, a pick a tool, your snips, some blocks. What else was there? Oh my goodness, the trimmer, the stamparatus, which I will show you later, the stamp and scrub so I can clean off all of my stamps or the chamois cut and boss machine these are all great things you need to have in your stash these are i think the the most important items that you need so if you're starting out stamping make sure you ask santa for this on your list L comment below on what you think about the tools which one you think is the most important tool to have in your stash i'm curious to know and in the meantime, don't forget to write northernstamper at gmail.com. Visit my classes, events, and my online store. And I hope to see you every Tuesday on Tuesday's Inspiration. Thanks a lot.